Buongiorno. I'm going to be talking to you about fountain pens and why I use them and why you should use them and which pens I own. I got seven pens, I think. I don't even know. I don't feel like counting. People ask me all the time, Jake, why do you use fountain pens? Why don't you just use a normal pen? Isn't it easier? In a way, yes. But I think that using fountain pens is greatly underappreciated in today's world. Mainly because the technology behind fountain pens is 100 years old. And it's still being used today. It's timeless. And when you take notes for a long period of time in a class or in church or at a business meeting, your hand cramps up. Because you got to like really press into the paper to use a ballpoint pen. But not with a fountain pen. It takes zero pressure at all. If it's a good pen. Because not all pens you buy that you may buy aren't going to be the greatest pens. Um, but fountain pens just make a life easier when it comes to taking notes for an extended period of time. And plus, I think... With fountain pens, it makes it a little bit more personal because I like to write um, letters. Um, I like to write um, some poetry, some songs every now and then. I like to, I like to write my de notes during devotions and my prayers and all that stuff in my books and everything. And I like having to choose what ink I use, which pen to use, and all that stuff. I like having a choice of doing that. You don't really get that choice with pens. You can dive into gel pens, which I think gel pens... I appreciate gel pens because gel pens are pretty cool. I like the text, the way they feel when you write with them. Um, I say if you don't want to get invested in the fountain pens, I would say just go for gel pens and just invest some money into some really good gel pens, and there you go. Because they're to me they're 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 okay. I like gel pens better than ballpoint pens. But anyway, fountain pens they're just more personal. I mean, you got pens like this one. This is the Monte Verde, um, Mountains of the World, Mount Everest. I got the Conklin Nighthawk and Titanium, Pilot, Metropol Pilot, Pilot Metropolitan, it's actually my first pen right here, first one I ever owned right here. Um, I got this one off Amazon, which I regret buying because it doesn't even work. Got the uh, Pilot Falcon, expensive. I got the Eco by Twisby, really good pen, good ink capacity in there. I could have ink in here for a few days and not run out. And another Pilot Metropolitan. And I have two more on the way. I got one on eBay for like 30 bucks, and I got the other one on sale on um, GoulayPens.com. But I'm going to talk about some of my pens real quick before I talk about my inks. This is, I actually just got this one today. This is the Monte Verde Mountains of the World, Mount Everest. The Mountains of the World pens are inspired by the mountains of the world, and each one is named by a different mountain. This one being Mount Everest. <clears throat> the cool thing about the mountains of the world pens is that not a single one is alike. Each pattern on each of the pen is different. So the one you own is specifically to you. It's not custom made, but it is specifically to you, which is another cool aspect of pens like this. Because no one else has it. You have this pen. The pattern is your pattern. No one else has it. And plus, you can look at pens like this. You got the little designs in there. I don't know if, I don't know if it'll focus. Will it focus? I don't think so. Oh, there you go. So you got all the cool little designs there. And I think that's really cool. When you go into the higher tier models of the pens, these type of designs usually tend to be by hand. Take a look at the nib. If I can get a good focus on the nib. Give it a second. It's trying to. It's not. It's too small. I think. Anyway, so pens like these, the designs are really cool and nifty, and it makes it different than your normal pen. And it's a good conversation starter, too. I mean, people see this pen, and they're like, oh, what's that? And they're like, oh, it's a pen. It's a fountain pen. And they ask to see it, and they show it to them, and they just ask me questions about it. So pens like this are really cool, because designs and stuff like that. And to a point, when pens get to this point, it's somewhat a work of art. Because like I said, not a single one of these is alike. At least to my knowledge, that's what I was told. Um, if you want to know, it's a stub nib, 1.1, stub nib, 
If you know fountain pens, you know what I'm talking about. It's actually my first dub nib pen right here. Um, then you got cool pens that are made out of metal, which is this one, the Conklin Nighthawk. Um, this is a Goulet pen exclu um, exclusive, made of titanium. So it's metal, very durable. It's going to last me a long time if I take care of it. I usually take care of all my pens, even my Pilot Metropolitans, even though they're, they're the lower tier models. I still take good care of them because they are really good pens for the price. If you're looking at getting a pen, you can buy a Metropolitan or a Lamy Safari, which I don't own, so I can't really speak for that one. It's got a black nib right there. Oh, I don't know if it'll focus. No, not really. But if you go on the site, it's a Goulet pen exclusive nib. It has, right there is their um, logo. Um, I have it in fine. I prefer fine because I can use it on most cheap paper, depending on the ink, all that stuff. Pens like this are very classy. These, this is the kind, of, this is the pen I carry around every day, mainly because it doesn't stand out like this one, and this one's more um, professional, like to me. Like I wouldn't want to have this one in a meeting because it'll be too distracting to the meeting. But this one blends in nice and well with your shirts and all that stuff, and it has a good little clip, good ink capacity. Let me show you the ink capacity on this baby. Huge ink capacity right there. That has a lot of ink in there. It's probably about 1.1 mils or something like that. Um, currently right now I have the Pilot uh, Uruzit, uh, Pilot Tsukio by Uruzuku. I don't know how to pronounce it. <clears throat> this is my first pen, Pilot Metropolitan. It's in fine, good pen. Pilot Metropolitan. I will always love the Pilot Metropolitans and I probably will continue to buy them. I will have a collection of Pilot Metropolitans. It's a good little simple pen, nothing too fancy. Um, small ink capacity. This one still has the squeezable sack one. The other Pilot Metropolitan I have is the converter. Um, this one actually has a little bit more ink capacity than the converter because the converter has a little bead thing in it that helps the ink flow through the, through the feed and through the nib. It helps it push the ink down so you're not having to force force start it a lot. Good little pen. Um, I do take care of them. I don't toss them around like some people do. I keep them in a case, which is right here. I bought this case on Amazon for like five bucks. It served me well. Um, this is a... I actually... I was cleaning this one out. Another, another one of my Metropolitans. And I had the nib... A converter in a cup and I was pouring the water out in the sink trying not to because I'm dumb <laughs> and I was trying to pour the water in without the pieces coming out and the nib came right out went down the drain it's gone so this doesn't have a nib <laughs> um, this is a cool little pen has a highlighter on it I use it it's useful um, this one I think I need to fine-tune the nib or something Cause it just does not write it just refuses to write all right and then it'll just get stuck it might be the ink i'm using i might clean it up thoroughly adjust the nib a little bit actually i'm looking at it right now it looks like the cut the slits aren't even cheaply made pen 15 dollars on amazon mm, if you're gonna buy pens go to actual pen sites like google pens to buy pens because this is an amazon pen i don't even know what company made it i wanted a bamboo pen it looks cool. I wish it worked. This is a, it is a cool little classy pen. But I will try and dive into cleaning it up with the cartridge and the nib and everything. And I'll probably try and adjust the nib a little bit using some more techniques by going like that on the table. Which works, by the way. Which is what I'm going to get to next. This right here is my baby. I love this pen. This is the Pilot Falcon. It was the first gold nib pen I've ever bought and it is the only gold nib pen that I've bought so far because I am currently bidding on a pen on eBay. I'm not going to say which one because I don't want anyone to outbid me. But this one is actually a cool little story about behind this pen. Um, I used to work at a church and I, my office was in like the playroom slash Sunday school room and all that stuff and I'll go up there into my office and my office was like in a corner of the room and it was like kind of it was put aside from everything else and i'll do all my paperwork up there and then when the kids were there i'll be downstairs playing practicing music teaching lessons and then the kids would go up into the playroom and play around and whatnot and one of them went behind my desk and got a hold of one of these got a hold of this one and broke it broke the nib like the nib was like like that like it's supposed to be like that the nib 
It was like that. It was just bad. Like they must have like <clears throat> pressed hard and broken. I told my boss about it. She asked me if she'd want to contact the families, have them pay. I was like, no, don't worry about it. It's a lot of money to fix the pen. A lot of money to buy the pen. But I said, just leave it as it is. I'll get it fixed one day. And I was going to send it to a Nimmeister, but he, when I emailed him, he told me he was going to be gone for like four months because he was going on to all these different pen conventions. And he wasn't going to be able to, he said not to send it in because he, you know, risks people stealing boxes off patios and all that stuff. So I left it as it is. And then one day I took the converter out. There's ink in there because it works. It actually works. One day I took the converter out and I was trying to get the nib out. And um, I took... A little headphone jack thing the thing you plug in your phone I took that and poked it into the feed and popped the nib slightly out and I was able to pull it out with a little bit of force and I took the nib by itself and I rocked it on the table a little bit and I pushed it for a little bit and I was actually able I don't know if you can really tell I've tried this before oh no I just let's see I doubt I'll focus it's really close and I'm using the phone here but I was actually able to readjust the nib myself and now it's working like a charm. It's working just like it was before it was broken. And you would never know that unless you own one of these. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's a little bit more bent than it should be. But it works. Like, I use it every day now. And it, it's awesome because I could have paid $100 to get it fixed, but I fixed it for free. Good little pen. It's actually my daily carry pen. I carry it in one of my breast pockets in my, wor in my work uniform. Good pen, love it. I would recommend buying it as an um, entry level gold nib pen, or just when you want to get a fancy pen, get the Pot Falcon. Good pen. Some people have personal preferences on it, they don't really like how it feeds, they don't like how it all that stuff. But I love this pen. Do your research on pens before you buy expensive ones because certain people like certain tastes when it comes to writing experiences and all that stuff. Anyway, so on to the next one. This is my Eco Twisby, it's a good little pen. Huge ink capacity. Apparently this one was limited edition, like in this color. I don't remember if it was or not. Good little pen. Um, it is piston, piston feed, I think. So it does take, um, you do need every now and then to use silicone grease, um, which I forgot to do at one point. It actually um, jammed my piston thing in here. <clears throat> Got jammed and I had, had to take it apart and fix it. And it took me about a week to figure it out because the piston wouldn't stay on the screwdriver thing inside it and I couldn't get it to come out so eventually I just got it in there and got stuck and I took um, a pair uh, a tie clip they use on your shirts and I took the tie clip and I was able to grab the rod and pull it all out together and I only scratched the rod a little bit but it works it works the ink gets sucked right up and all that stuff and it works just fine good pen it does have a little bit of feedback and I don't use it as much but it's actually my go-to pen when I use it on tests because the ink that's in here does really really well with um, cheap paper and that ink is the let me show you it's Doodler's Burma Row Brown good ink on cheap paper doesn't really feather doesn't really bleed through especially on this pen this pen's um, nib is fine or extra fine doesn't even say I believe it's a fine I don't think I want any extra fine nibs last but not least my other pot metropolitan this is snake skin pattern same as the other metropolitan good little pen trusty reliable pilot metropolitans are my backup pens I keep them on me all times I don't use them as much because I got some really good pens here like the Conklin Nighthawk and the Pilot Falcon in my newly acquainted Monte Verde Mountains of the World, which some people say has feed problems, but I haven't had any feed problems since I got it today. Um, since it's a stub nib, you do have to keep it straight and all that stuff. Anyway, to the inks. I'm gonna try and get the inks through real quick. First ink right here, got the Aurora Black. It's actually my first ink ever. I bought it with my Pilot Metropolitan right here, black and black. I told myself when I was getting the pens, I'm not going to get into inks. I'm only going to buy black ink. Yeah, that's a lie. Right here I got the Diamine Burgundy Royale 150th Anniversary Edition. Kind of looks like a slice of cake a little bit. Um, I don't really use this one as much. 
it's a nice little color it's more formal I would use this for writing letters to my mom or my dad or birthday letters or all that stuff I would use this ink to write them um, maybe some big hefty checks I gotta write stuff like that this ink right here is import from Japan this is a some really good ink it's the Urizaki Tsukiyo it's actually probably one of my favorite inks and I use it sparingly because it is expensive but $30 a bottle um, you're about to see that I'm a huge Noodler's Ink fan. Noodler's Liberty Elysium, really blue. I don't use it as much, but I do use it. Um, I find that's a little bit too blue for my taste, and that's why I don't use it, because when, when I'm using it a lot and I, it's a few pages of blue, it kind of strains my eyes a little bit. It doesn't make my eyes feel comfortable, which is kind of sad, because it is a really nice blue. It's just a really saturated blue, which is why I'm more of a blue-black fan when it comes to inks. Um, this ink right here, this is probably, actually probably one of my favorite inks. It's the uh, Noodler's Aircore Blue Black. Um, very nice ink. I love the color of this ink. It's not, it had, it's just a really nice ink. I can use it taking notes. It doesn't stand out too much. I can use it on tests. I can use it on formal things. It's a really nice ink. It ties well with pretty much anything. Um, I would recommend getting this ink. Good ink. You've already seen this ink today. It's the Burma Row Brown. Good ink on cheap paper. I find at least when using a fine nib. Good old good ink right here. Um, I bought it because I wanted the, the old look and ink look. And it, it does do that job pretty well. It's actually got some shading to it. I wish I could show you writing samples. But it, I'm already going into 68, 16 minutes and 50 seconds into this video. This right here. Um, I don't really. I like it but I don't like it too much. It's Noodler's GI Green. It's a really green ink. Um, I'm considering getting into drawing with ink, doing some cartoons with ink and all that stuff. Good ink, um, not my favorite, but I do like it. All the inks I own, I like. I can't say anything bad about the inks I own. I own, and I'm looking at them now, and there's not a single ink I can say, "Ooh, I don't like that ink." Ooh, I wish I wish I didn't buy that. I bet one day I will though. But I love all my inks. Oh, and just just so you know, I haven't even been in the pens for a year yet. This one right here, second ink I ever owned, and it still has ink in it, and I love it. It's the Noodler's 54th Massachusetts. It's a piece of history, and that's one of the reasons why I love Noodler's ink so much, is that most of their inks are tied to some sort of American history or world history. They do not just specifically make American history inks. The dude who owns Noodler's, they make inks associated with all, pretty much all history through the world, and pretty much all their inks have some sort of historical attachment to it for the most part this one right here i love for the story behind it it's washington uh washington it's noodler's purple heart it's it's severely dedicated to the purple heart award and if you don't know what the purple heart is it's when you get injured in combat and you get the purple purple heart medal um and it does look like the purple from the purple heart band right there it, it's pretty much on par with that color i love that ink Noodler's X Feather, bought this for school, nothing too special about it except it's really good on cheap paper, doesn't really feather, doesn't really bleed through, dries super quick. Good ink, um, I probably should use it more often, but actually a lot of the paper that we use here at my school is somewhat expensive paper because it's on tests, when we take tests and all that stuff, and I have my own personal um, expensive paper, which I don't have on me. I own the red and black notebooks from Germany, good ink, good paper. This one is Noodler's Bad Blue Heron. I got this as a gift from my parents with my Conklin Nighthawk. They wanted me, they asked me what I wanted for college, like a nice bag. I said, just give me a nice pen and some ink. And they got me this one. Great gift. Great pen. Great gift. Came with this, asked for this ink. Um, this ink is pretty much impervious to anything. It, it can't be taken off with bleach, I think. Um, it's resistant to UV light like it won't if you had it on paper. It's not going to degrade from light It's going to be on there for a long time and pretty much if you get this on any of your clothes It's there to stay it ain't coming out. I haven't tested it yet But I do know that ain't gonna come out because the way the ink was made um, Last three here Monte Verde black. I just recently bought a box set of ink from Ghoulie pens for a fall season um, Just a simple black ink 
This one I really like, Fire Opal. It's like a really good Halloween orange. It's gonna fit well. It's gonna fit well with this fall season. Kind of looks like the orange that leaves take when they age. This one I'm a little iffy on this ink. It's really, really. It doesn't really. Uh, it's the Topaz by Monte Verde because it's with the Monte Verde fall season set. Um, the ink. I don't know how to explain it, but the ink is very light, like it, kind of like highlighter. It's pretty much like highlighter ink to me, at least. It feels like that. Like you can probably, you can even see through the bottle. That's how light the ink is. So it's probably more along the lines of for good drawing or highlighting if you have highlighted pens. But I don't know if it. I don't know about highlighter ink. I don't, I'm not in the highlighter pens. But anyway, so that's all my pens and inks and everything. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about it. Um, and I do keep some of my pen boxes. Um, this is for my Monte Verde Mountains. The bottom one is for my for my Conklin. And I got another Conklin Nighthawk on the way. It's the uh, carbon fiber. Got a bunch of Doodler's ink bottle boxes. A bunch of them, cause you know, I got like 20. Um, the mod, the Diamine 50th anniversary box. All that stuff. And yeah, so that's everything pretty much. Yeah. All right.